we introduced quantum states as a generalization of classical probabilities, but we left it open how exactly we extract a certain event with a certain probability. So to formalize this, we have to introduce measurements. But before we introduce measurements, first we have to introduce a bit more of the notation. So if we remember, we introduced a quantum state as a column vector, which we write as a cat. So we have a vertical bar and an angle sign, and in between we write the name of the, the vector or the variable. And in the simplest case, this is a, a two-level system. It's a qubit, so it can take uh, it's a vector of two elements, uh, and both elements are complex. Now, a complex number in general is written in this form. So for instance, a no uh, is equal to x no, which is a real number, plus the, the imaginary number times y no. Now, there is something that we can do with complex numbers that we cannot do with real numbers. We can take that conjugate which means that we flip the sign of the imaginary component. So with this conjugate, we can introduce uh, the complement of a cat, which is its conjugate transpose. So if you, uh, it's called a bra, and it's written in, in, as, as the mirror of the cat. So we start on an angle side from the other side, and then we write the name of the, the bra, and then a vertical uh, sign. So this is equals to the complex uh, conjugate transpose of the cat. This sign uh, is called the dagger. And since this is a transpose, it's going to be a row vector. And each of the complex components is going to take its complex conjugate. So that's it. So it, you can think of it as when we talk about stochastic vectors, we can also transpose them. But since we talk about real numbers in the case of stochastic vectors, this complex component doesn't make any sense. Whereas here, we, we have to take care that we are deal with complex numbers and there's something to get out of this. So for instance, with this notation, it's very easy to write dot products. So for instance, if we take the bra of some arbitrary state, psi, and we uh, follow it up by a cat, that's going to be the product of a row vector with a column vector. In other words, it's going to be a dot product. So it expands as uh, a null, the absolute value of a null squared plus the absolute value of a1 squared. And we know that since the vector is normalized, this is just one. So this is just one particular way of writing the two norm, by the square of the two norm of the quantum state. And for instance, if we look at um, the zero cat and its dot product with the one cat, then what we are going to do is we take this row vector, multiply it by this column vector, and that's going to be zero. And it's not surprising because the dot product of orthogonal, orthogonal vectors is always zero. So what if, what if we take the other order, so we take the cat and the bra. So you see this is a bra, this is a cat, which gives you a scalar. But if you take a cat and a bra, which we also write in this form, which is just easier to write, this is not going to be a scalar, this is going to be a matrix. So in this case, we are multiplying this column vector with this vector, which is going to give you this matrix. So the order makes a big difference. If you take a cat and a bra, that gives you a matrix. But if you take a bra and a cat, that gives you a scalar value. And as a matter of fact, if you look at this carefully, this is nothing else but the projection to this particular basis vector. So armed with this knowledge, we can start talking about measurements. So the intuition is that the measurement is very, very similar to a random variable in classical probability theory. So in classical probability theory, random, variable, uh, random variables takes, take values. And here, measurements take measurement outcomes. And you always get a random outcome 
just the same way a random variable is intrinsically random. So to make it more formal, if you remember, we mentioned the Born rule, which tells you that you get some outcome zero of a qubit state with probability the absolute value of a no squared. And the state afterwards becomes the zero cat. So the superposition is destroyed, and you only get one part of the superposition. This is random which part you get with a certain probability. But this is what we call the collapse of the wave function. And the way we write it down is actually with this formalism. So a measurement outcome is actually a projection. So for instance, if we want to model that we get the outcome 0, then we take the corresponding projection and we apply it on the quantum state. Now, if you look at this carefully, this is a cat, this is a bra, and this is a cat. So if you look at only this part, that's just a bra and a cat, which means that it, this is going to be a scalar. In fact, this is just the projection to this particular uh, basis vector. So this is going to be the zero cat times a nu. And if we take the absolute value, we take the length of this vector, that's going to be exactly this vector. So if we take the, the length of a nu times the zero cat squared, that's going to give you exactly what the Born rule tells you. And now if you look at this expression, and you look at this expression, you know that you can write the square of the two norm in this form. So we can actually write this. as, say, this. So in other words, you can also look at it as an expectation value of this outcome. And the state afterwards is basically this state just renormalized, which means that if we look at what we get, This is going to be this projection in the nominator. And in the denominator, we have to renormalize this state, which is going to be the square root of exactly this expression. So this is the mathematical way of describing how you, how you pull out samples from a quantum state in other words, how you apply measurements to this particular probability distribution.